Hello and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 348 at scavengerlife.com. Ryan, I feel really good. Our house is very clean. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that quite yet. Okay. That, I, I feel good I'm about just, that. I'm just, I'm looking at yeah. our bookshelf because usually we're like, there's all this stuff on our bookshelf. Right. We're, I'm we're, just saying. We're teasing that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that. Okay, so... Ryan, I wanted to take this moment to acknowledge when the hard work we have done has paid off. Oh, I like that. I mean, if we were talking about that, it's yeah. sweet that it w that we don't really do that very often. Because we just keep going, 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 right. going, going, going. It's never enough. Right. And you know, I think anyone that runs their own business probably feels that way too. Like, yeah, it's never enough. The time you put in, the money you make, you know. It's like you feel like you can't stop. Yep. Because you kind of can't. Or And also it's like, if you feel like, well, if this is working, what if I do a yeah. little more and then that can work? You right. Know? Oh, I, no. I mean, I totally agree. I, I, I mean, it, it is. It feels never ending. And, you know, when I look back in the past 10 years that we've been doing this, yeah. uh, you know, it really, at the end of the day, this is more than I ever yeah. imagined. Yeah. And I know in the forums we, we had like, Someone come on I recently saying she lost her job and was thinking about turning her part-time store into a full-time store. And, you know, it's it's a, it's a big deal, you know. Yeah, it's a huge deal. Yeah, to, to, to even consider doing something. Okay, so let's talk about some of our near-term goals. So it's like yes. you said, our house is clean. This week, it was mainly me because I'm more OCD than you are. I got all the eBay stuff out of our house and into our new storage building. There's no glass, teddy bears, <laughs> teddy bears. coffee mugs. <laughs> oh my There's God. A nothing under our bed. There is just uh... <laughs> Yes. Yes. Um, it is really crazy because all the, like in quotes, delicate stuff like ceramics, mugs, glass. Right. Pottery. We we kept in our house just for safety. Yeah, because reasons. we didn't want to throw them in a bin. Yep. So the shelf space existed in our house, you know. So we had this cool day bed that's right by our wood stove. So you know, it, it would be is like the perfect place to just kind of chill out and read a book. It's a built-in day bed, right. so it's almost like a bunk bed, but it's like a single bunk bed. Right. It's like built in. And and it has not. <laughs> it's been not been used. visible. <laughs> For three or years more, now, because, because it was it was piled with rugs because that we didn't was wanna, our rug storage. We didn't. It's want to keep the uh, rugs in outdoor storage where the wool, you know, the moths would get to it and all that. So, um, like we have not even seen that blanket yeah. or that mattress. Yeah. Like, there's been it's no. Awesome. So to me, that's a big win. And you know that twenty thousand dollar building, yeah, including everything, insulation, all that is. So, is so much worth it to me than like us buying a brand new car, you know, which could have been another oh, option. Oh, twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, could, could have done. You know, it was such a good investment. Yeah, you were really good about moving this stuff. I forget what I was doing. I think I, you were. I was working. listing. I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's all good. I was just uh, motivated yeah. and I also had a a vision of where to put everything. I so. I actually took a picture of that shelf today because I'm going to use it for the like podcast image because it just looks so great. So I didn't even uh, show you how I organize it, but it, but it makes sense. It makes right? sense. Yeah. Glass on one shelf. Yep. Mugs are hanging. M all mugs the are like, hanging. I did help hang all the mugs. You did. I did actually hang every yep. single mug. So, you know, another thing is that, I mean, I just think we have to be aware of is like, we are able to a live on our eBay income. Yeah. If we didn't make any other uh, money at all, we could live. We yeah. could uh, live on our eBay income. Yeah. Because you know our expenses are uh, low enough, and we do fairly well on eBay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, we we uh, wouldn't be rich. Right. But, but we would be making a living. And we would own our time. Yeah. But the cool thing is, is that even without our income, we've now built another stream of income and that's our our rentals and if we had right. to we could uh, live on our rental income yep. all by itself yeah any time of year even during the slow times when people don't uh 
and you rent quite as much. Yeah. We would do okay. So that's cool. Well, and the reason we did that, I mean, what, what's funny is, so we have a video production business, just you and I, and um, eBay was the was the buffer. Right. eBay was the fallback to be like, look, if something happened, which it did in 2008, the economy completely crashed. Right. So we were like, there's no work for us at that moment. So eBay was the fallback. And then we picked up a little work, you know, here and there after that. But and what's interesting is you're kind of trying to make these streams of income. So if one falls off or breaks or can't be done, you're like, okay, we have this other thing. So it's it's kind of nice to have those. It can be a lot of work sometimes when everything is happening at once because right. there are times where you're like, I'm working on this, this, and this. Like everything's happening at the same time. But, you know, it's like we said, when eBay is slow, which can be the summertime, that's when our rentals are like booming. So it's like a nice balance that you can kind of have both streams of income happen, you know, several of them happening. And it's it's worked so far. Yeah. Know? And, you know, and just to be clear, it's taken time for us to get to this point. But yeah. again, I think for anyone who's doing this and has done it for you know, at least, a, a, you know, a period of time, you got to look back to see where did you started from. Right. The other thing is, and, you know, we've always been frugal people, so this hasn't been a big problem, but it is something I have to acknowledge. We do not have consumer debt. Can you explain what, will you just, like, explain what that term means? Sure. You know, like, we do not live on credit right. for just our daily life. Right. So... Buy cars, clothes, clothes, food, anything, you know, we always spend what we have. Now, that right. being said, I will say we do have some debt that we're paying off right now from our last uh, edge renovation of a house, but that was a business expense. Right. And we are acting like our hair is on fire and You're trying to that pay that off as quickly as possible. Yes. And then, of course, we have... Uh, debt on houses, you know, a mortgage, mortgage debt. debt. But again, that's business expense. We do have, so we own three houses. Yeah. Three properties. And we own one of those properties outright. Yes. So that really makes me feel good. It's good, yeah. You know, that we aren't, as they say, a, a leveraged company. Now, the reason we own that outright is because we paid cash for our house and we renovated it in right. cash. And then we've uh, used that to buy other properties as, you we know. use the equity right. to get a mortgage for them. And, you know, properties. one of the goals I have kind of in the next five uh, years or so is I, get, I would love to pay off yes. other properties. Yes. And in, I know that some people are... Some people you know, are like, against that, right? They're like, you know, you have cheap... More, you know, like uh, interest, in rates. interest rates. So if you put that cash into like whatever index funds or the stock market, you'll do better. But like other people have said, to us, it's more of an emotional thing. Yeah. It would make me feel better. I don't really trust the market. I don't like all that stuff. I mean, we saw the last I like week, this. the I last like two weeks. Old shoes. I'm yeah. not wired that way. <laughs> I like old shoes. Yep. You know, I like selling old shoes, you know. So I'm a simple, <laughs> that feels pretty solid to me. I'm a simple man. You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm feeling, you know, and, and I feel too like we, you know, got over that long age renovation where we're spending so much uh, money and just like, you know, where you're halfway in the uh, middle of, of a big project and there's no guarantee it's all going to... Uh, a workout. So we've come from the other side. Yep. As we speak right now, people are staying at both of our rentals. It just snowed us yesterday. Money. <laughs> they both sent us a messages saying how they love them. Nothing could be better. You know? I mean, that is like, you know, there's always issues and maintenance and, sure. you know, cleaning. And sure. we cleaned both houses yesterday, two in a row, both of us. Right. Um, but to have that satisfaction where you're like, yeah, we did it and it's working. Yeah. I can't believe it. Right. That's how I felt when our first rental started was it was like we finished the house. And I remember that first moment we got a booking and I was like, oh, my God, it worked. 
You know, it's like everything we planned for, it actually worked. Right. You know, and, and that's how it feels. And you know, we don't, and so, and so that's a deal. I mean, at this moment, we don't even have to sell on eBay if we don't want to. Right. Which is a luxury, you know. Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy luxury, but uh, I mean, eBay is, has been the thing. I say it all the time. It's like... I, cash engine you know well it helps us do other things it's I a mean, thing that pays for everything else yeah you know so and so <laughs> the idea is if we want to do other things you keep working at ebay right. you know you don't you just don't stop it right and so i don't know i just wanted to do that number one just for ourselves because yeah. i don't think we acknowledge we talked about that this week yeah that we don't acknowledge when the good things are happening so when the stressful time comes we can look back of like oh yeah you know uh the other mm -hmm. thing is just when you know, i mean again people come on the a form or email us and just ask us about how to make this a living we right. just i just wanted to share the thought process i mean like that's you know, I watch this of videos too online where people are like, you know, how to make a million dollars on eBay. Yeah, yeah. It always seems really kind of kooky to me because I don't really think like that. Like, I never right. think like, I'm trying to make a million dollars. It's like, no, I just want to live my life comfortably without a lot of stress. And this is how we do it. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. Well, you know, and we can talk about this more with what we learned in the forum too, but when people are asking about, you know, you started this conversation talking about consumer debt, like having a car payment, paying for cable television, well, you know. Right, that, you write that person that said they don't have a job anymore and they just want to do this full time. Right. It's not just thinking about eBay, but yeah, think about all Cut of down. the expenses. Yeah. We always say that, and that's something we learned pretty early on, you know, especially from like people like Mikey and Wendy, where they're like, if your expenses are like this much, you know, this tiny much, so you don't have to work as much. We're like, oh, it's like such a mind blowing thing. You're like, yeah, if I have like a used car <laughs> yeah. that I paid cash for, uh, you know, you're like, I don't have a car payment every month. And, you know, if I have a really low mortgage or, you know, I own my house outright so I don't pay rent. Yeah, I don't have those expenses every month. It's like we're not we're not, uh, you know, brought up in general in our country to think like that we yeah. just aren't it is strange i lived for a long time just spending almost everything i got right. every paycheck you know right um but yeah you know and, and that's what we as scavengers share it's with the personal finance people right the people who are into yeah uh, being independent financially yeah. independent what's it called uh yeah financially independent fi fi right yep there's another word for it, but yeah, anyway. Early retirement. Early retirement people. Um, you know, and they have a different approach to it, but but they their thing that we share with them is being super frugal um, and don't spend your money, but use it for other things so right. that you can get, have your time yep. back or retire early, like yep. whatever. We're, we're kind of like pretending we've retired early even though we work all the time yeah. but we work for ourselves you know yeah. but i mean i think that's the other thing too that like the early uh age retirement people try to like always be talking about is that retirement isn't this like yeah kind of i don't know i feel like it's a baby boomer thing or maybe it's like the baby boomers uh it parents this idea that if retirement means, means you stop if you will work 40 years yeah. really hard and then suddenly there's a day where they give you a watch, and, you, and then <laughs> you're done, and then it, it, you don't do anything. You sit around and do nothing. And I just, you have a hobby. I just feel like that's, like, you know, people our age just don't embrace, you know, like, that's not, it's what it means. Well, I also have seen it, well, you've seen it with your dad, and I've seen it with my mom and her husband, where, you know, he's retired, and he's kind of like, what? I like went to an office for the right. last like 40, well, 50 years. Right. He played golf for a couple weeks and now he's like super active and you know, right. they're wanting to start a little businesses. And yeah. Just so, yeah. you know, <clears throat> he is very lucky and he has a pension and things like that. So they're fine. But it's like they want to have an active, interesting life as yeah. all of us do. And they're so lucky that they have their time to do that now. Yeah. But I think there's... 
there is uh, an issue with a lot of people who are retiring right now where they're, they are kind of like, what do I do? I, m- my work was my purpose for so long. Yeah. You know, so... Anyway, that's like a whole other podcast subject, but yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we've talked about all this a lot, but I just, I don't know. I just wanted to bring that up, and that's that's right there. Yeah. It's like, it's right there in the uh, middle of the floor. Take what's interesting, and then I'll leave the rest. You know what's great? There's nothing in the middle of my yeah, floor right true. now, because for that's like true. two years, there was like eBay yeah. stuff in the middle of our, yeah. in the middle of our uh, living room. I couldn't even walk through it. Okay. Before we talk about it's what our week had been like on eBay, uh, yes. I do want to mention one thing. We actually have a job yes. in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. It's in April, right? In April. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're going to be bringing our car. Mm-hmm. We just found that it was it was like an eight hour ride. It was like nicer to drive than to fly. Other uh, reasons. So, and we're working at the convention center downtown. We're going to be there for a week, and we really just need a place to park. Yeah. For the whole week, and then just pick the car up and go away. So we don't yeah. need access to the car back and forth. We've been checking out parking, and you know it's expensive. It's like thirty bucks a day. We're just putting it out there. If right. There's a scavenger that lives in. In a Nashville, um, you know, if you know of like cheap parking, like even if it's somewhere where we could park and then just take an Uber downtown, right? Just you know, relatively safe. I, I we don't have fancy car, so yeah, it's not like we're worried about someone stealing it. But. It's just it's tough because, like you said, parking downtown can get expensive, but parking at the hotel we're staying at for our job is crazy. Yeah. So we're like. Is there any place you could pay like five to ten bucks a day and just leave the car for a week? And, you know, have it just be relatively safe and just that it won't get towed. That's a big thing. We saw that where the, what is it, the music hall or... Music center, that's where the... We were reading on uh, on Reddit Reddit that supposedly you can park there for free if there isn't an event. Oh, it was, sorry, it's not the convention center, it's the Titan Stadium. Okay. So people are like, oh, if there's no game, you just park at Titan Stadium. And I was like... For free. For free. Hmm. So people said that, and it's right, there's a pedestrian bridge that's right right across from like where Hmm. we're staying. But I'm like, is that true? I can't really right. find any other information. And they won't tow about. you away. Right. Well, I mean, right. I'm like... And football's s- over, so... Yeah, football will be over. Is there anything else? So, uh, so I read it I read it on Reddit, and I was like, I don't really know how to like confirm this. So if anybody lives in the Nashville area and they know yeah. information, I would love you to You guys know. know what we're asking. Okay, okay. so let's talk about eBay. Um, <laughs> this is funny that we're going to say this, but... It was slow. <laughs> what are we going to say? What? Because last week we're like, slow, but compared to okay. what? Okay, so <laughs> right? let's compare. Right. We like to make $1,000 a week. Like, that's what we need to make a week. We need to... Like, uh, that's the minimum. Right. Like, so we need base. To, we need to, in sales, and this is not a, 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 a net a right. profit. Gross. A gross profit needs to be $1,000 in sales. We made $1,087.78. So it was just what we needed. Like we were like eking by. Emotionally, like if our eBay store was a lifetime film, (laughs) it was a very emotionally disturbing week. Yeah. Where we would have a day where we would sell one item, you know, for $20. There was one day where we sold like a belt for eleven dollars, and I was like, "What?" Yep. I'm even surprised when I checked out our numbers that we even made a thousand dollars. I like I couldn't believe it. I thought yeah. we probably made like six hundred dollars. Right. That's what it felt like. And I saw on the uh, forum other people were saying the same thing. I'm sure there are going to be some people that had good weeks, so that's right. awesome. It is just what it is. I have no idea why. I mean. <sighs> You know, there were some days where I was like, is our store not turned on? Like Jay makes a joke when, when a sale comes through after many, many hours. He's like, did you turn the store back on? I was yeah. like, what? But, yeah. you know, and again, the stuff we sold was just like... Oh, man. Super... $11 bell. <laughs> I'm going to talk about that in a bit. And then yeah. in our second store, yeah, we sold five things for $89. It's so funny that you obviously put those numbers on there because I was like we even sold anything in the second store but it was because it was the first 
like two days of the week, and then the rest of the week was zero. Yeah, we got you know we got a a good handful of offers, just a lot of just low ball low offers, ball. and you know. They were, you know, and I'm in the mindset of just like, I'm ready to do some deals. But people aren't even doing half price. They're like, <laughs> it's like lower $100 than... item. They want to pay $10. Yeah, you're I'm like, like, oh my God. You got to meet me. Like, why? You got to come up some. At least go halfway here. Yeah. But it's just one of those weeks. I you're just sweating know. it. Yeah. Okay, things we sold. You know, so part of us uh, moving everything into our big storage building is that we're actually eyeballing. Our, our inventory. inventory. You know, yeah. normally our, our inventory's in bins with tops on them. Far away. <laughs> and they're just on shelves. We only, only, only time we go into them is if something sells, but yeah. I'm not really paying attention to a lot right. of stuff. Now I'm having to pick stuff up and, and I'm going through it all yeah. just to see what do we have. And really, it makes me think like sometimes I check this stuff out. I'm like, this is stuff that... I can't believe it's why. Are, why do we even have this? You know. Yeah, you're like, what is this it's garbage? So <laughs> junky. Like this is the stuff in the bottom of bins at the Goodwill outlet or at an auction. You know, like right. But, the stuff that nobody wants. Right. So, but at the same time, for me, not not just moving it, but for me, when I'm going through those bins, I'm like, well, you know, you look at a bin and you're like, this is the junkiest bin. There's a bin called um. There's two bins, small metal, small miscellaneous. There is some junky stuff in there that I'm like, what is, what is this? Yeah. But the reason I'm in that bin is because something in there sold. Right. You know, and I'm frequently in those bins to get stuff. And this week was one of those weeks where that was the yeah. That was the main stuff that sold. Like some, like I'll talk about, like there's a print of like a church. In like a in little town in Pennsylvania, you know, just random, not fancy. Some guy actually bought that, you know. He bought it for ten dollars. Hey, he bought it. But he offered us ten dollars plus shipping. Yep. He lived in Arizona. I was like, cool. I mean, just I mean, stuff that. Yeah. And and I think that to me is a good a reason why I like the list it and just don't think about it. Right. Because if I start obsessing and start yeah. to think and and. and and see what we have, I start to it's question and second guess. Yes. You know, why do we have this? Like yeah. we just need to sell this for a dollar or let's just, just donate right it back. It. And if I just I need to not think about right. it so I don't obsess about it. And so it's when it sells, it's a surprise, you know? Right. And and that's not to say like we should have inventory that we think is junk. Like that's not you know what it is it's more like you're finding weird long tail items and it reminds me of a sale well this week like i had this sale of um seven books about you know ancient art and you know medieval art and things like that like the masters and you know stuff like the renaissance so it's this seven volume it weighed 30 pounds you're like what Right. is this you know it was this table of books that you bought that i cursed you the second you put I your bought hand the up whole box for, for ten dollars it was ten dollars yeah i was gonna say a dollar yeah. but yeah so you know it's something like that and i sold it for a pretty good price i forget what the offer was this book sold for sixty dollars so on a week like this you're like well like something else that sold just uh yesterday was like this old yeah. handmade box. It was like a carpenter's Someone, toolbox. You know, some grandpa in like the 50s took like a, a box of grapes, you know, like Those old a wooden, wooden box, crates, yeah. took it apart, made just like a poorly made little toolbox. Yeah. And I don't even remember having that. Yeah, it's like, about. where did this come from? Someone gave us an offer for $42, which we took immediately. You had it elicited for $75. I'm just like, that's... If I, uh, looking at it myself, I would be like, let's put that up for $9. You know? <laughs> $9. But because it, yeah. you put a good high price on it yeah. and you had a good title and listed it well. And we sat on it. For a long time. For a couple of years. Yeah. But it sold. But it sold know? this week when we needed it to sell. Yeah. So good, you know. And so that's that's the thing about our inventory is like, you know, I didn't know that box was going to sell, but hopefully a box is going to sell every week. And, you, and know. you know, when I go through them, you know, oh, once they sell, then I get uh, its valid 
validation yeah. that, that we made the right choice. Right. Like if it's just at the bottom of a box in a plastic bag, I'm thinking like, I'm the stupidest person in the world. Mm -hmm. Like, why do I think this is worth anything? If someone buys it, I'm validated. Like, oh, you're yeah. like, I was smart. Someone else thought it was cool. So when I go through the stuff that we s sold all, all a week, I'm like, yeah, there's a reason why we put that up there. Yeah. You know, that makes sense. A Baptist hymnal, of course, you know, right. $15, you know, yeah. some guy, you know, runs a church and, yeah. and needs like another hymnal, you know, right. like, uh, he's looking for that exact you know, like publication, you know, a, a fireman shirt, you know, uh, right. That's old. So we have found this fireman shirt. It was for Manhattan, like lower Manhattan. So obviously they are like, kind of famous, you know? right. So someone in the UK bought it. Yeah. Cause people collect those I'm things. Like, you know? 35 bucks. Yeah. Cool. Why not? A little patch of like kind of an abstract cat. This is the funniest thing. I never thought I'd sell that. It sold for $26. It goes from Ecuador, right? It's like kind of like a, South American design. Panama, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, something. That's right. It's from Panama. It's it's a certain design, um, but it's things like that where it was just in a fabric scrap. I mean, who bin, gave you, you know? permission to put stuff up so high? <laughs> Twenty five dollars. That's crazy. You sold. We sold like a, a typing, like a a book to teach you how to type. Smith Corona, you know, like typing on a typewriter that no one ever does. It's probably from the sixties or something. It's from the sixties. So for twenty five dollars, it had a record you, with it. Why would you do that? <laughs> well, thank if God I, I did, because we I, actually like paid our bills this week. If I scan that on Amazon, it probably is one of those things cents. where they tell you don't even send it in because <laughs> no one's gonna buy it. You know what? You know, you know what's great about that book? It was a Smith Corona like ten day typing course. The photographs and the graphics alone are worth 20 bucks. I mean, you we sold, like, I mean, You're like, it's a you hanger, you know? Hanger, yeah. It's a hanger you put in your closet, you but it has some on it. hooks on it so you can put belts on it. You sold it for $25. Yeah. Why didn't you sell it for $5? <laughs> because I mean, it's solid maple and brass. That's why. I mean, did, did you see somewhere where someone sold it for that much? Or? Are you being serious? Right? I, I, I am. I mean, I'm being kind of serious. It's you know like, what's funny about my pricing? No, no. I mean, tell me in that specific chain, what made you... It There's no like brand. A maple, <laughs> no brand hanger. <laughs> What made you think that you could sell for twenty five dollars? Um, I think I can't even answer you. Uh, hmm. I mean, I'm assuming. Are you over in the office, like like high? You're just like, just like, yeah. like fifty bucks for this <laughs> thing. Um, okay. I don't, dude. Honestly, yeah. I'm trying to answer you, and right. sometimes it's this is how much I want for this right. item. Okay. It's a it's a quality item. It was solid maple. It's yeah. like. You know, you try to buy something like that at the container store and you live in Manhattan, mm -hmm. that stuff costs $50. Right. Like what? I don't know. Crazy. Um, I mean, you know, again, because it got purchased, the uh, validation is there. You right. Know? So people can't I'm not, say... It, I'm not it, saying it I don't choice. research stuff. I'm saying sometimes when I research things like that and there aren't very many of them or they're of lower quality, I'm like, this is a nicer one. This one's really vintage. Right. Okay. So here's, yeah. it's one more and then we'll go on to yeah. other things. We sold for $50. It's just like a, a yeah. blank, like school a notebook, book. like a notebook where like a Collegiate student, student notebook. It's just like a, you know, uh, yeah, a notepad, but it had like kind of a cool cover. It's all for 50 Dollars. Now that that I would have priced it for seven dollars. <laughs> that notebook had someone's name on the front. It was completely blank. They had never used it, but the way they wrote their name and the type of pen they wrote it with suggested that this notebook was from the early 1900s, in my opinion, hmm. like 1920s, 1930s. Um, like fine cursive with like one of those pens that you have to like dip in ink and you're like, what? This is old. Um, so I priced it high and someone bought it. <laughs> Trust me. When I saw that price, I was like, I cannot believe I priced it that high. <laughs> you said awesome piece of history. Did I say that? That's I what you said. In the, I mean, back you in the day. You wrote that? Did no, you write that? I think... 
And you did. Uh, back in the day, we would actually write stuff Little, in the, the like, description. Now we're just like, whatever. Anyway, we thought it was important, like, you know, cool piece of history. Sometimes I do write stuff if it is really cool, but... Yeah. So anyway, um, you know, we, we pulled it off. I feel like it's yeah. week to week. Like, we, we got through. It's just week. We pulled it off. We made the money we needed to make. And, you know, today's a new day. Yeah. I will say today's in... So on a Sunday, according to eBay, is like the... Uh, the start of the, the week. The start right? of the a week. So anything we sell today doesn't count. But I will say I woke up and I sold another one of my insane clown posse hats. A hundred dollars. To a juggalo in Australia. Yeah, I guess they're Australian yeah. juggalos. Juggalos down Juggalette. Under. Yep. Um, yeah, so I've been pricing those very high. But it's strong be- prices. It's because the hats are unique. Like yeah. I don't see any other ones with these like fancy like dare I say, fancy patterns. Well, I think it's the thing of, I remember when, when we first talked about me buying all those at the auction. Yeah. Some guy was like, yeah, I, I, I had a bunch of them, you know, they I couldn't really sell them for well. 30 bucks. I sold them for cheaper. I mean, I get it. If you're trying to sell stuff fast, yeah, you definitely, it's want to sell them cheaper. We're willing to hang on to them. So like every week we're selling one. Yeah, so this one sold for $106. In 25 cents. Customer issues, we had a pretty good week. We have a couple of items that people wanted to start a return on. Yeah. It happens, uh, you know, and so we always just check to make sure they actually ship it back. So we'll have to keep sometimes an eye on that. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It's all good. Yep. Uh, okay, things we learned in the uh, forum. Um, so someone asked a good question. Because yeah. I didn't actually it's know this until we talked about it. Okay. If someone requests a buyer... Wants to return something. Right. For not as d- d- described. Like they're bl- saying you did right. something wrong. And so if we have to approve that. Right. They We actually don't pay for a label till they actually print it, right? So, it? so here's, here's the thing. You only pay for the label if these things happen. They print it and they send it and you get it back and you don't dispute it. If you dispute it and you win, you don't pay for that label. Or if you accept the uh, it's return and they don't print a, a label, then it, you don't pay for it either, right? Because that often happens where right. people just don't get around to... Right. Now, <clears throat> sometimes you'll get an email that's like, this has been shipped back, but there's never any tracking. To me, that says they just printed the label. Okay. They didn't put it in the mail. They printed the label and they didn't do it. So then you only get charged or we only get charged when it gets scanned, shipped? Like if they print it, right. don't we get charged no. right away? No. no. If okay. it's not used, th- that's my understanding. If okay. it's not used and you get the case closed in five days, like they never shipped it back. I think you get a, I think you get a, a cred- uh, credit on your invoice. Okay. You should. That's cool. that's what I know. Well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, someone had been asking that. And then uh, another thing is, yeah, I talked about it. A woman said that she uh, lost her job and yes. she wanted to take her part-time and turn it into a full-time store. And she, she was very cool. People were like, well, if you post at your store, we'll give you feedback. Right. And, you know, that can be a scary thing to, like, kind of open it yourself up. But it's a good group of people. And people gave really good, I mean, a lot of ideas that I had never really thought about, about, you know, how to take better photos. Yep. It, you know, better titles. And to uh, use every single character in the title. So You've got to use if, every character you can. Because don't you get, what, 75? You get 80 80 characters. characters. So if you're only doing like 25 characters. Like when people are like, gray t-shirt with a bird on it you're like no there's so much more you could say about that you know (laughs) like that's not enough for someone to find it yeah and there was a seller there's a seller i follow uh who he uh, uses um uh images in his title oh emojis emojis which i didn't even know that you were able to like like, putting okay so i don't know it may, I mean, it doesn't help you in search. Like, I'm not yeah, going to search, search for, emoji, for that emoji, but I wonder if you're, like, going through and a list of items it. and if you see, like, eyeballs or, like... Uh... You know what? <laughs> That's, to me, just as bad as people who used to write, look, exclamation point, with two at symbols. Just, like, 
It's so trashy to me. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah. It's, I just, it's very off-putting to me. I think it's cheap. That's what it feels like. It feels well, cheap. It just seems like it's it's not really understanding the best way to be uh, to write a title in a way that's going to actually attract people, right. and that is through keywords, and that's why you want to basically. Yeah. I mean, I guess the bad word is keyword stuff, but that's only if you're not uh, using, using keywords the right that keywords. are appropriate. But you know, things like color, date, size, size, names. You yeah, know, brand name. Anything that you have that has a tag on it. The material. Put all those words you know? on the tag because that's what people search for. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then the other thing is, I mean, people were also helping sh share it with this uh, a person just the long term strategy. Yes. Of like, you cannot turn. So I don't have a job on you know February first. Right. I need to make a full time income right, by, by February. You know. Yeah. You know, the Did you end say of the month. February thirtieth. Yeah, February thirtieth. <laughs> no, February thirtieth. That's impossible. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a it's a long term strategy. You know, like, you know, it took us a good six months before we started to, to make right. enough. Right. But you have to money. start. Right. If you start now, you've got to start and do it. You have to start so. now. You know. Okay, our coming week. Uh, this is kind of a scavengery thing. Yeah. Nothing to do with eBay. Yes. But me and this and a buddy of mine. He's our he's, handyman. He's he's a buddy. You know? He's a but he yeah. is a. Sometimes I think he's more of a scavenger than us. How can that be possible? But he is. Right. He'll be like. I'll, I'll put something down on the ground, like like some screws, and he'll be like, oh, are you going to throw those away? I'm like, no, I'm keeping them. He's like, okay, because I can a, use them. <laughs> he's definitely a scavenger. He doesn't sell the stuff. No, he doesn't. Which is, you know. Which uh, is a different part of it. But, uh, yeah. So, it. I mean, I, I'm I'm paying him, so he's not doing yeah. this free. Anyway, right. we're going to build a deck at one of our, our, uh, our rental houses. And right now, the deck is like an old, it's pressure-treated wood deck. Right. You know? It's already existing. Typical. It's what you know everyone has, and it's starting to look bad. We've had to replace some boards because they started to like kind of rot. The rot through. Yeah. Uh, it's probably ten yeah, years I think old it's more or so. Than, yeah, I think it's more than that. You think it's more than ten? It's not much more than ten. Thirteen, years old. ten to yeah. thirteen years old. Anyway, as a scavenger, what we decided to do was to pay more to get a better quality of wood. Right. Instead of just tearing it all up and, you know, probably for a small amount of cash, we could just get brand new, it's pressure treated Deck wood, boards, yeah. redo it, and then have to do all of it just over again in another 10 uh, yeah. eight, eight years or so. Instead, I found a place online where I could get this hardwood, yeah. like a tropical hardwood. Yeah. And, of course, as a scavenger, I was trying to make a deal, uh, and I... And they said, well, if you can buy this wood cheaper, mm -hmm. but it's like the B grade, you know, it's going to have like knots in it. And, you were like, great. And uh, it's a little bit not, all the pieces aren't perfectly straight. It's a little bit warped. You're like, huh? <laughs> but it's super quality. It's yeah, this it's kind of wood called, how do you say that? Cam Camaru? Camaru? C-U-M-A-R-U. Camaru? It's like Ipe, but yeah. it's like for cheap people. Well, it's beautiful. Anyway, uh, you know, it's definitely not cheap. You know, it's not the same price as just getting pressure treated it's wood. It's expensive, but... So we built a hardwood deck out of black locust at the newest house because we're like, we never want to touch this. Right. So this is a similar idea where we're like, we just want to do this and, and not touch it. I want it. to build this and not have to do anything to it. Like, I won't replace For the any rest boards. of my life. Yeah, that's and it. And it's going to look good, no maintenance. Yeah. And, you know, and honestly, too, as a scavenger, it's something we've learned. It's low maintenance, but yes. It, you know, it costs as much in labor to install a cheap deck yeah. as it does a good quality wood deck. Right. So the only, its difference is how much it's we pay up front for the stuff we right the materials so we always say that the labor costs the same whether you're using crappy materials right. or you're using quality materials. and it's the same idea of like it takes the same amount of time to uh it's list a ten dollar item on right. ebay as it does a thousand dollar item right you know so it's the same idea time doesn't change it's just right it's just a thing that you put into it exactly so that's what i'm going to be so doing. you're working on that this week 
what what am I doing? doing? Uh, my 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 new eBay helper was sick last week, um, so she wasn't here. But she said she's feeling better, so um, I think she's coming on Monday. We'll, cool. We'll see. We have to put up all those uh, our robes up. Those. Oh yes. Yeah, so so our our other eBay helper came this weekend and took photos of all those kimonos. They look really good. She did a very good job. She got through all of them. Um, so we have to find a place for those. And, um, which is great. and something I will, uh, as a scavenger, it's very important for me to talk about this. So in our rentals, I gone online and I got all these magazine uh, subscriptions uh, for cheap. Like a lot of Like them. if you go online, like if you can find these sites where you can get like, you know, a, a whole subscription for like 10 bucks, you know? Yeah. And you know, it's like all the cool subscriptions people would like to read, you know? Yeah, just like contemporary magazine it's vanity fair and popular uh it's mechanics just, and yeah like vogue and stuff yeah. like that uh the cool thing is we keep all of those yeah so we're gonna sell them and i pull them out of the house so it's not just like a bunch of five year old magazines right, right. in the house and we stack them up and we're gonna sell them and yeah people buy uh, architectural like digest like that's kind of so decor. like decor l decor um <laughs> yeah so it's funny because uh I had looked for stuff online, like on eBay, like, oh, it'd be cheaper to buy like, um, like that magazine Dwell, like I'll buy a couple years of Dwell and put them in the houses. And it was so expensive. I was like, we might as well just get a subscription for like $10. Right. <laughs> but and so, then sell them. So, so we're like we're renting them, them and we're making money. Yeah, you're making money. Yeah. So, so we piled those up and we're starting to, we're yeah. going to sell those. I got to put them in plastic bags and number them because yep. it gets a little crazy if you don't do that. So a new topic we talk about, which, and I love on the forum, people are starting to yes. post things that they cook and cool recipes and recipes. links. I talked about, is last week I was going to try to make kimchi. Yep. I will, I would like to say it was a success. Well, we haven't tasted it yet because you still have to keep it's, fermenting. I've been tasting it. It's oh, you delicious. did? I mean, I'm not eating it like out of the jar, like big, you know, spoonfuls. Yeah. But you know, I taste it like it's delicious. Tastes good. So I made two, two batches. Two, yeah, and it was really easy, uh, super easy, and it's in the fridge. We're gonna have it be in there for about another week or so while it, uh, you know, tangs up. So your question is, what do you cook to eat with kimchi? Yeah. So I gotta go online and look. But if anyone knows, is like, is there like a kind of meat is there like some kind of dish like what's good that's to good eat with it. kimchi you know like a pickled kimchi yeah i'm sure anything but yep what am i gonna well let's see so we've been making pizzas every week and the reason that's even remotely exciting is because we try to eat a low carb diet so i have to like make the crust from scratch so it's made of coconut flour right coconut flour it's like it's a really easy recipe i should I don't know if I linked to it already, but it's like coconut flour, um, a bunch of spices and cheese, and like an egg. And it's like a trash pizza, and then we just open up our fridge and, and whatever's just, in there. You know, we fry some onions and some garlic, and then like Jay has a bunch of like we'll frozen some, pepperoni. Yeah, we'll just like you know we got cheese. I like mushrooms. And, like I'll yeah. I'll make sure I have some mushrooms. Right. Um, but but what's so great is because we can't really eat pizza out because the. The dough is like so carby, although it's so delicious. It's because it'll make us fat. Basically. Yeah, basically, like, and it was. Like I'll eat a pizza every day if I. Could. Yeah, like like but if I won't. if I'm allowed to, I right. will just eat like pizza and pasta because right. I absolutely love that food. It's delicious. Um. So anyway, that's been really fun. I will link to that um that crust recipe. It's so easy. It takes no time. And you know what? It tastes like. It just a tastes pizza. like a pizza. Right. It tastes like a flatbread. Right. Because, you know, pizza tastes like anything that's on the pizza. Yeah, so. I mean, we use lots of cheese and tomato sauce. and It's a, uh, yeah. And so the other thing that I made yesterday, because this is like the funniest craving. We were having a craving for like tuna fish sandwiches. Yes. It's like... This tuna time, fish is with like <laughs> chopped up pickles in it. Right. So it's basically like a tuna salad. So it's like tuna salad, but what I love it, how I love it is, you know, on bread, obviously, with um, sriracha. So like it makes mm. it spicy and like crispy lettuce. Mm. But the problem is we don't eat bread. I right. mean, another thing I would eat every single meal if I could is bread. Toast. Any kind of bread. Yep. 
bagels. Oh God, bagels, yeah, buttery five bagels. Five bagels a day. I will just if we have bagels in the house, I'm like, that's all. Why, why would I eat anything and else? Cereal. Oh my God. And like three bowls of cereal. Yeah, you're just <gasps> like, why would I? <laughs> so anyway, we don't have any bread in the house, so I made some bread, like little, basically like little hamburger bun type things. Also made out of coconut flour. Um, and how do you say it? It's like psyllium husk. It's like the stuff that... I've never heard of it before. It's the stuff that Metamucil is made out of, yeah. hilariously enough. It's a but binder. Yeah. It's a binder and it's like a fiber. And, it, and when you combine it with coconut flour and like boiling water, it makes a dough. Yeah. And it's super low carb and like it's delicious. And you know, it's pretty good. You know, it's nothing like... It's not bread. A real piece of bread, but right. it has that bread squish and yeah. delicious. And we had for dinner, it was like our date night, and we had tuna <laughs> fish sandwiches. That was a date night. We just like. <laughs> and you didn't know it was a date night. And then and then, then we watched a couple of the movies we, on Netflix. It did. It yeah. It was great. That's a total scavenger date. Yeah. Like we basically ate like <laughs> tuna fish sandwiches. <laughs> But it was so good. It was good. I so had I had no one for breakfast. It was a treat. Okay, let's answer questions because people are tired of hearing. Ugh, that. They're, they're like, why am I listening to people talking about tuna fish? What is this podcast like, about? What's my life become? Okay, you can call us on our voicemail line. The phone number is five four zero four zero seven eight four eight six, and you have three minutes to leave a message. Hi, Jay and Ryan. It's Karen from Lavender Clothesline again. I am the woman who had the crazy um, Icelandic buyer, and I heard your podcast uh, today and just wanted to um, confirm that eBay did give um, the Iceland uh, buyer my telephone number because I had blocked them, and um, then they started messaging me saying, why did you block me? And then a few minutes later, did buy the item on another account. So that was right there. That was, you know... Uh, sort of like an alarm to me. So um, so eBay did give them my telephone number because they were able to purchase the necklace on a different account. So um, they have since left me horrible feedback saying I'm a dishonest seller for canceling the sale, which eBay told me to do. And I've called eBay now 10 times, which have given up, um, because the representatives, a couple of them said, oh, yeah, this feedback will get removed, and they don't remove it. So um, I've taken, you know, your advice and just let it go. It's, I only have the one negative. But um, also on another note, if you give the wrong telephone number, if you ever need eBay to contact you, like you want to call back, or then they won't have the correct number. So I've thought of actually putting in a false number, or I'll probably put in a Google um, number for them. But, um, yeah, so just figured I'd give you guys that, um, that end of the story. I have the bad feedback. Um, and that person has my telephone number, which I've blocked. So, um, yeah, alarming that eBay gives our phone numbers out. Okay, love your show. Thanks so much. Bye. A bunch of people commented right. as well saying that we were wrong or just, you know. No, so, so here's the thing that was unclear about the first call. It sounded to, to us like she said the person was being annoying. She blocked them eBay gave them her fo the Icelandic person the phone number and then the person bought it. But that's not what happened. The person bought it on a second account because you can just do a guest account or right. open another account. And then they gave her gave the Icelandic person her phone number. So eBay will only exchange numbers if there's a transaction that's been made right. and it's been paid for. They're not just going to give out your phone number to any buyer that asked, any user that asked for it. Right. So and, that's cleared up. And, you know, I think that, I think that's kind of a holdover from the old eBay because, yeah. uh, you know, someone was, was talking about like, it's weird eBay would do that because eBay wants people to keep all transactions on, on eBay. eBay. I yeah. guess if you've sold the item already, but I feel like it's once you start putting people in connection, like... I could call someone and be like, hey, I'm glad you bought that thing from me. Yeah. Just I just want you PayPal to know offline. I've got a thousand other items. Right. I'll sell you off of eBay, right. you know, and exactly. you can start taking that stuff. So yeah. just like on Amazon, yeah. does Amazon ever give people? Who, no, I you know? have no idea at this point what Yeah, Amazon I feel like there's no a reason to for buyers and uh, sellers to talk on the phone. Right, uh, unless... Unless you're going to do local pickup and you need to, like, talk on the phone for some True. reason. Um, 
but then you just give your phone number in an eBay message, right? right. I mean, like that we've done that before. Hey, if you need to call us, right. this is it. So the other thing too is, yeah, call me, maybe. Call me, maybe. Um, you know, doing a false number. The only reason to do like a like I said, I used the local Chinese takeout place as my phone number for a little while because someone was harassing me. You'd only want to do that temporarily. I mean, why? I mean, just just do it all the time. I mean, if someone, I mean. I just feel someone I need to contact just just do it through eBay. Well, but she's saying if eBay ever needed to call you or whatever, how often does that happen? I'm oh, so sure. it's the same. So you can't give eBay a number and then give like a public phone number for something else. I have no idea. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I so, don't know. I don't know. It's really not that big of a deal. Just don't do like me and never answer your phone. Yeah, right. I literally. Never answer my phone. Right. If, if Jay calls me, I might answer. She doesn't even pick up my I'm like, oh, <laughs> My mom calls, I might up. answer. <laughs> Text. Text I just never answer my phone. Hi, guys. It's Kara from Lexington, Kentucky calling again. I have just had a really weird thing happening where my buying or selling is being restricted to any buyer that's buying more than one item. I had this happen a couple weeks ago, and I was on the phone with eBay, and they walked me through deselecting every single buyer restriction, which I have done, um, but it didn't fix the problem. And so what I had to do was go into, there's a list of buyers that you've blocked, and I had to go in and manually select them and exempt them from restrictions, even though I had none. And I I thought I'd fix the problem, and then it's happened again where a buyer wanted to buy multiple items but couldn't. And fortunately, they messaged me, and I was able to deselect them from this list. But looking at the list, there have been about 30 buyers that have tried to buy multiple items from me in the last two or three weeks. And I have no buyer restriction set up. So I was on the phone with eBay for quite some time, and they couldn't figure it out. Um, and I'm just curious if this has happened to anyone else. They said that it was probably a bug that they would look into fixing, and they've got it flagged. And in the meantime, just to check my restricted buyers every day and unrestrict them, which is kind of frustrating because I'm probably missing out on lots of uh, multiple sales. Um, I ended up uh, buying a lot of someone's uh, Mary Kay items, which I guess they were getting out of the business. And um, those are, have been the items that people have been wanting to buy multiples of. So if you ever see a lot of that stuff, if it's new in box, snatch it up. It sells really quick. And I had to laugh when you guys were talking about the discount. Okay, I don't know why you got cut off because that was only two minutes long. But um, I wanted to hear about her laughing. I know. Well, I, yeah, I think she was laughing about us not passing on the shipping discount uh, to people. Okay. Yeah. Um, Does anyone remember laughter? <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> What is that? You're too young to know. Is that Monty Python? No, it's a Led Zeppelin. Anyway, go for it. <laughs> well, it's definitely British. So, I guess I'm confused about what the issue is. The issue is that people are trying... So, you have, like, quantity 10 of some eyeshadow from Mary Kay, and people are like, I want to buy five of these, and they yeah. can't? Yeah, I, that's bizarre. We just don't have very many multiples. I mean, so is she saying it's a bug, or that, that some... Like, she doesn't. She mm. said she called eBay and they, nobody mm. knows. That's weird. Yeah. Well, if anyone else has been having that issue and has got it solved, please. I feel message. like I feel like on the uh, forums, people have been talking about all kinds of like weird you know, little bugs, bugs, like people who do their work from their phone oh. and the eBay app is giving them problems. It's like not saving things. And I just don't know if you know. You know, Maybe that's why sales again are because slow. eBay refused to have like a change sheet or know, like a bug, a bug tracker or you yeah, know bug there's no place you can go and see like this is what the known bugs are and they say you know and they say they're uh, working on them. It's a black box. We don't know. So we, we don't know if it's just an individual person having a problem. Is it site wide? 
Is it getting right. fixed? And you know, I think this just happens because eBay is always upgrading and changing, and then things break. And yep. so, you just you know, us plebs, we're just out here in the in the dark, a village, just kind of scratching around, and we just do the best we can. Yeah. Yep. It's sad. In my recliner. In my recliner. Hey, Jay and Ryan, love the podcast. I was going to clarify a uh, question you guys had about customers not being able to leave negative feedback on a case. Here is the situation. If a customer opens a case and you dispute it, that is the key part, and the case goes to arbitration and eBay rules on it and decides in your favor, then the customer can't leave negative feedback. They'll actually send you an email about this that says, you know, the case has been decided in your favor. You're not required to submit a refund to the customer, and any negative feedback will be blocked or removed, or I forget the exact wording, but something to that effect. So, yeah, as you found out with the shoes, unfortunately, if you accept the return uh, and do everything right, give them all their money back, they can still leave negative feedback. Hope that clears that up. Love the podcast and have a good day. Bye. Yep, he's exactly right. That's, that's, he pointed out a very good point. Yeah. People can leave you bad feedback even if you do everything right, you know, buy them. Go buy them. Give the refund. It's only if you dispute it and it goes in your face. And that person loses, then they can't come back against you and be mad at you and right. you know so well that's that's, that's where my confusion was right. so yeah if you say this person sent these back <clears throat> and said item not as described even though uh they clearly said they didn't fit then they'll be like oh, okay right but you know it's like in the that case where we got a negative yeah uh it recently it was like on a 12 dollar pair of shoes yep the shoes were a vintage she said the uh, inside, right? The yeah, inside was, was like, like dry rotted. was like flaking off, and so we took the return. No problem. We paid for everything, and then and she, she still gave us, said they sold me shoes that were dry rotted, and you're like, okay. and she was like, beware. Yeah, like, you're like, what? I returned like, your money. Oh, you know, come on. You know, but that's that's her right is, as as an American. Hey guys, this is Sarah. I'm a new listener, but I was listening to this past uh, week's podcast and you guys were talking about whether you pass on your discounted shipping rates to your customer. And I think that um, uh, that you shouldn't do that because you actually get charged eBay fees, from my understanding, on um, the shipping uh, prices. So because, you know, to try and prevent the people from selling a $1 item, but then charging people $99 for shipping in order to, I think that's why the eBay gives you the discount on the shipping to kind of offset um, the final value fee that they're going to charge you on the shipping fees, uh, your shipping price as well. Um, and then also too, uh, you know, giving patient emo, uh, a person uh, free shipping, you know, it doesn't really matter, but on calculated shipping. So, yeah, so that's why um, I don't think it's appropriate to pass on your shipping discount to customers that when you're doing paid shipping because you're being charged fees on top of it. So, anyways, uh, thanks so much. Bye. Yes, you get charged 9% on your shipping price. Right, so it, it is kind of kooky. I mean, she's exactly right that for, I think they changed this a while ago. It was a few years ago. Six or seven uh, years ago, where people were getting around the final value fees by saying, well, I'm going to charge you 99 cents for this $10 item, and then I'm going to charge you $25 to uh, ship the item. So first class to shipping. Yeah, Yeah. so it would work out to be the same price that they're just putting it into different bins. They're basically reversing it. Yeah, and so eBay was like, yeah, no more. So now eBay officially sees your income in uh, shipping as As, income. So even though you don't really make anything on it, you get Except for the discount, it. they yeah. charge you ten percent. So if so, if you charge someone ten dollars to yeah. uh, ship an item, they eBay charges a dollar final value fee on. Yeah. That. So that's really she does yeah. her point. Don't that's where that, the like, that's a discount crazy. helps pay for that. Yeah, exactly. You know? So right, and you know you also have eBay fees, and you know if you buy packing materials, you have that, et cetera, et cetera. So. Hey, it's a personal opinion. Everyone that's can. That's our opinion too. 
Okay, that's it for the podcast this week. You can check out the blog at scavengerlife.com for the links we discuss and to join the conversation on the forum. You can leave a question or a comment on our voicemail line. That phone number again is 540-407-8486. We post an episode every Monday morning. On Wednesday, we post a What Sells video to show you what sold and how much it sold for, currently being brought to you by Stephen Schultz. You can subscribe to us through iTunes or YouTube so you always get the latest episode. And we are ending this podcast in three, two, two, one. one. Thank you.